Hello everybody. Today I want to show you our new capacitive sensor for continuously measurement outside of the tank, the KQ10. It's uh, 250 millimeters in the length and we are able to get a process value out of it from 0 to 100%. You can see here the LEDs blinking and this is an indicator for how high is the level. So you can see the level inside of the tank even when it's not transparent. We have also three hardware switch points via cable. In this webinar I want to show you how to mount the sensor, how to set it and what are the main functions of the sensor itself. In this application we can see here a small container with water and a bypass so the level inside of this small tube here is always the same like here. Um, the diameter of the inside of this tube is approximately 7 millimeters. So the sensor is very precise and can even detect this tiny amount of water. Um, for an easy setup we just have to make an empty teach something like an offset that the sensor don't see the tank wall anymore or in this case um, this small tube. It's already finished and I just have to rise the water here and we can see that the sensor is already work working just with one teach. For the highest precision we make also an additional full tank teach. Um, so now the sensor is set it as precise as possible. In some applications it's not easy to empty the whole tank or in this case the pipe. So we have an additional option. It's called a dynamic teach. At first I reset all the tank adjustments. Um, for this dynamic teach the level should be approximately at the middle of the sensor. So we start the dynamic teach. Um, as you can see the sensor is already working. Now your machine can work, you can measure the level and after a while you stop the dynamic teach and the sensor is set. It. In this case beware a little bit because the precision of this tank adjustment is not as good as it would be with a full and an empty teach. As I said before, the sensor has three switch points via cable. Factory setting is that just one switch point is available. So if you want to use the additional two, you have to set it. In this case, I will use, for example, the function window function normally open for the second switch point. And I will choose also a hysteresis function for the third. For the second switch point, I will choose a switch point between 70 and, for example, 40. And write it to the device. So it's easy to set it. You just have to type in at which level the sensor switch on or off. You can use the hysteresis function, which means that um, you have a set point and a reset point. And we have window functions. That means that the sensor or the switch point is on in this level, for example. So the second switch point should be on between 40 and 70 because it is a window function. On and it should be off at 70. We are also able to teach a level for example, in this case, I set it as set switch point 3. The sensor is detecting the level right now and is saving the data. In this case, it was 52. And we also can set the reset point maybe here. The switch on point is at 52, the switch off point or the reset point is at 26. Let us check. Now the third switch point should switch on 
and it will switch off now. We are also able to set the sensitivity of the sensor. In this case, the sensor is switched high because we have a very small diameter and um, it's not very easy to detect this tiny amount of water. In general, the sensor is good at the sensitivity high, but we have some applications where you should use the sensor in the sensitivity low. You can see in this graph where the sensitivity high or low is the best. So on the left side, on, on the upper left side, you see the wall thickness of 10, 9, 8, 7 millimeters. And on the bottom, you see the dielectric constant. So with a dielectric constant of 10, which is quite low, and a wall thickness of 10, which is very high, we are not able to detect any liquid or grain or whatever. Um, on the yellow part, you see that the perfect setting of the sensor is the sensitivity high. And when you have a very, very high conductive media, for example, acid, which is higher than 120 dK, and a very, very thin wall thickness, it's good to use a sensor setting sensitivity low. When you have applications where the process value is rising very, very fast, and you don't want to have a process value which is shooting from 0 to 10 or 50 or whatever, um, we are able to set a damping inside of the sensor. So now I will set it at 3, write it to the sensor. On this graph you can see the damping. Um, imagine you have a process value which is rising from 0 to, in this case, 10. Um, and you want to have a very stable process value. So you are implementing a damping for a second or three and you have a very nice curve of, of the process value. You can see it also in this application. You see that the water is already drained or is already in the middle of the sensor, but the process value is going very, very slow to this 45%. This is very, very good when you have a tank and you fill it with water, so the water starts swapping but you need a constant process value. In this application, we will mount the sensor upside down and on a flat surface. For mounting the sensor upside down, so with a cable on the top, we have to change the direction of the sensor from bottom to top. And then we will mount it on the surface. And like I did it before, we just have to make one empty teach. The direction of the sensor is now top and we, made the, we already did the empty teach. So the sensor is able to detect everything which is in front of it. In this case, we use plastic granules. This is actually a very hot detectable granule because the dielectric constant is very, very low. But we are able to detect it even without a voltage. We are also able to use one of the switch points for a fault signal. We just have to activate one of the switch points, in this case switch point 3, and set the fault switch point here on off. This is especially for high high application or low low application. 
when the sensor gets disturbed or maybe detecting something which can't be a level, the sensor is setting one switch point on. So when I touch the sensor or the tank over here, the third switch point will switch on. This is for safety because when the level is rising, rising, rising and the sensor gets disturbed in any way, um, this switch point will be on and the application is safe. The level inside here will stop, so we will have continuously these, in this case, 39% of the filling level, but the switch point will switch on. When I remove my finger, the sensor is working as it worked before. We are also able to minimize the detection zone of the sensor. On the sensing phase, you can see 16 parts of electrodes and we are able to minimize it from the top and the bottom. I will minimize three electrodes from the top This is um, good for mounting the sensor when you have just something like a side glass and um, the side glass have just this size. So we are able to minimize the detection zone. So here could be metal and you are able to detect the medium inside of the tank in this area. I will only make an empty teach. And you will also see that the level or the LEDs won't reach the upper part. So the process value is still from 0 to 100 percent, but this part of the sensor is not working anymore. We can use the KQ10 in several applications. One is detecting liquid inside of a tank. The other one is detecting granules in a tank. And we are able to detect liquids or granules or whatever inside of a pipe or bypass or show glass. Please be aware that the container, the tank wall is out of a non-conductive material, for example, not out of metal. Um, so we can also use a sensor in very small tanks, for example, in printers, and we are able to detect or to measure the complete value of the tank. We can use the sensor for critical area monitoring. That means for high and high high application or for low and low low application. We can use the process value of the sensor or we just use switch points and save sensors because we just need one for one critical area. Like I told you before, we are also able to measure a level inside of a pipe or a bypass. In a bypass is the level always similar to the level inside of the tank. If we have larger tanks, for example 800 millimeters, we are able to use more than one KQ10. We just take in this case three sensors, mounted the three sensors on the tank and we are able to see the process value from zero and from the ground of the sensor to 100% to the top of the sensor. When we are used the KQ10 for a larger detection range, for example for a larger tank, we just have to connect the sensor to an IO link master and go from the IO link master to a PLC. Inside of the PLC we are collecting all three process values of the KQ10 in this case, I called them high, medium, and low. We take the process data value, divide it by three, and we get a process value from zero to 100%. The sensor also have limitations. For example, like I told you before, we are not able to look through conductive material, for example, metal or ESD plastic. And when we have very, very thick and um, high conductive adhesion, the sensor may have a problem to watch through it. The, one of the biggest sales benefits are that you have three sensors in just one housing, so you save money 
because you only have to mount one sensor, you only have to set one sensor and you save wiring. We are able to give you a process value from 0 to 100% outside of the tank, which is very special and useful when you have um, media inside of a tank which is very aggressive, for example acids or alkalis. We are also able to detect an adhesion. That means when you have a rising adhesion inside of your tank, the sensor is able to give you a warning, a pre-warning, before an error occurred. That means um, in the past we had sensors which switched on and never switched off again because the adhesion was rising and rising and rising. This sensor is able to give you a warning before this might happen. We have a very high EMC protection. This also allowed us to mount several KQ10 um, close to each other. It's called frequency hopping and when one sensor gets disturbed, it will switch the working frequency and will still work. The sensor shows the level inside of a tank, so you are able to see what is inside of a tank even when it's not transparent. We will have two different kinds of sensors. Um, the KQ1000, which is a 2 meter cable variant. We will have the KQ1001, which is this friend here with a pigtail. And three different kinds of mounting accessories. One is the mounting accessory for mount the sensor on a small bypass. The other one is the mounting accessory for mount the sensor on a surface. Um, the E12677 is actually just a tape, um, so 10 tapes to mount the sensor or to glue it on a tank wall, but there is one tape in one box with the sensor.